Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sean's Two Cents. Your number one source for movie and TV news. Oh yeah. I search all over the web and compile a list of the top TV movie news. I give you the news and give you my quick opinion. It's the once your one stop video source for all your movie and TV news. Three days a week, 20 minute videos. 15 tournaments. We don't know how long we're gonna go. Every video could be different. Last m Monday, I went a little crazy and was ran raving. But today, calm, Sean. Calm, Sean. Day. Unless something on this on this notepad right here on my PC right here will get pissed off. But I'm pretty sure nothing will. Let's start off with The Dark Knight Rises. A rough cut was screened for Warner Bros. The first screen movie, and the movie it, the runtime is. Four hours. Four hours. When, now, another boxer will be the Avengers. They screen that movie. That movie was only three hours long. So, Christopher Nolan and his team will have to start chopping the bits a little bit. Because I don't think anybody wants, I don't I love, I love Batman, but four hours, hell no, I'm not sitting through a four hour movie. The last movie was 152 minutes, so I think they'll cut down a lot. And I think we'll get it like probably a three hour maybe. I think we'll get a three hour Batman. That just shows the the scale of this movie. It, it just the plot is he battles Bane, the terrorist. That's what we'll the plot. We don't get much of a plot for this movie. We, it will come out a week after Comic Con, a week before Comic Con. So be weird. Most Batmans are coming after Comic Con, so we'll see. The news is that no one might make a surprise appearance at Comic Con a week after Batman comes out and talk about Batman. So it'll be interesting to see what the red time is on this movie. Uh, put in the comments what you think the runtime would be. The last one went 152. The other one, Batman Begins, with 132. So I give it two hour, two hours and a half. I give that. I don't know why they gotta go so long, but the narrative I know is always good. You gotta get the narrative in. The action scenes in. He's always got to do that. And and after this, what is no one gonna do after Bat after Dark Knight Rises? Is the big question. I don't. I haven't looked into what he's doing after this, but it'll be interesting to see what Dick Pratt gives. He seems like he can't do nothing wrong. Like the best last Inception was great. Batman Begins was good, and I, I'm still wanting to go see Memento and his other movies back in the day. So no one is right. Every day. now I've heard on this one, keeping the podcast, IGN, listen to it. I haven't seen in a while because I've been busy. But they used to talk about fanboys, and fan, there's always a big fanboy director. No one's up there right now. But when they screw up, the fanboys will be right on them. They ain't screwed yet. Like, if Whedon fucks with Avengers, which he's not, what from what I've seen from Avengers, Josh Whedon is like, has broke the narrative up better. The script is a lot better than anybody that's taken over the franchise. No offense to John Favreau, no offense to Kenneth Branagh, but I think Josh Whedon is the best director Marvel has had for any of the movies. No offense. If you want to differ from me and tell me a better director than Josh Whedon for this movie, because he has to deal with Robert Downey Jr. He has to deal with all these big people. He has to do with Disney and Marvel. And for him to do that good, and this is his first major movie. I know he did Serenity, but that wasn't a big budget movie. That was his own movie. He had his own control. It was a small budget movie. That was his own movie. Okay? And and I think Josh Whedon and coming, was it a month later, a month from now? To, yeah, we have that. And also, never just where we go to get the nose and notes here, Hunger Games tracking for 100 and 70 million our weekend. Now our law, the, the record is Twilight Breaking Dawn made 130. I think I can't go right on figures right now off my head. I have no notes here. I am freestyling right now. Freestyling. Hardy and track it big. It opens this weekend. I'm, I'm get I'm going on Fandango this uh, three o'clock. Get my tickets. My dad gets some. Gonna buy them right now. Go with my cousin. So I'll have a preview. I'll have a review Monday. I haven't read all the book. Sorry, people. I am not a book reader anymore. When I was a kid, I used to love books. Goosebumps, all these kind of books. Read all the Harry Potters. But lately, I have a Kindle. I bought a Kindle. It doesn't do anything. It is somewhere around here, but I won't grab it. But I can't. I don't know. I just don't feel like reading. Every every book is coming into a... Is, every book is going to a film adaptation. So there's a, there, I heard... I'm I, I told you last week, a couple months ago, a book that isn't out yet has already had a film adaption. There's like three trilogy, three film novels coming out of the movies. We have beautiful creatures and some, a couple other books are coming in the in the Why the Last Man. A lot of a lot of uh, 
Also, yesterday, Meredith Wong Smith, yeah. Louis Collins, that's in release. So you can't really need to read books anymore. They're all, all coming to films, so why read them and spoil the films? So, it's not going to hinder my enjoyment of the Hunger Games, I don't think. And everybody's compared just to Battle Royale, the Korean like horror film type movie. I don't read movies with subtitles, so I'm not watching it. I'm not, just because I know I'm lazy. Don't see me, I'm lazy because I don't read. I read things. I read articles for you guys all the time. If I didn't read articles, I wouldn't do my show. Okay. And so, I, my, what my thing in this time games, we're going to have a poll on this website, on this. So, I said Gmail, email me a number, post comment the number. How much do you think Hunger Games are going to open to? I, I think it will. $184 million. That's what I said. And it's a weird number. And ask what it might come out to. 184 It is selling faster than any non-sequel ever. Pendangle. Friday, you can't see the damn movie. If you want to see this weekend, you just say, oh, I'm going to pop over to the internet and go see it randomly. No. No, no. You go on Fandangle today or tomorrow, get your tickets now. Because they're fucking sold the fuck out. I don't want to see the midnight screening. My God, will that be crazy? The Thursday night, I can I guarantee it will break the open the the midnight screening record. I guarantee you. It's ridiculous. Twenty this this 2013. We got Hunger Games coming out. Then the Avengers. Then the Rises. Which of those three will win it? Which of those three will be the big winner? Could Hunger Games stick around and beat those two? Because Hunger Games is gonna be the measuring stick of the whole year. The measuring stick of the box office this year. And what number it, it, it lands on, we the number that every movie will have to beat this year. Twilight will have to beat it. Twilight, it's actual witch, it's made to beat up, beat out. People always compare Hunger Games to Twilight. Jennifer Lawrence, there's like a fake beef, and she was laughing at it. Like, she emailed Kate, uh, Chris Stewart saying, there's no beef around us, there's no beef. No. So people always want to create uh, tension when there is not no tension, but there's no tension between Hunger Games and Twilight cast. Hunger Games is totally different movie, and I'm really excited. And, I'm happy for Jennifer Lawrence, I'm happy for Josh Hutcherson, one of my favorite actors ever since he was a British Ardiffia, Theresa Murph. I loved him as an actor, he's a great actor, and I hope in everybody in this film has got to be going crazy, because when it opens Friday, they're just sweet. Jennifer Lawrence is now a name actress now. Okay, I went on all too long, my little, little, let's go right to the news here. Let's go to the news here, as we've been talking about movies. Seth Rogen and Kevin Hart, two of my favorite guys, are going to start in a buddy cop comedy. Pretty cool. I, look, I hope it's like Lethal Weapon. It'd be awesome. We'll see what kind of role Seth, Seth Rogen will play. They, they, Seth, they asked Seth Rogen personally to start his movie, so we'll see how it is. I've been talking about the Percy Jackson sequel a lot. And uh, one person who's not coming back to Percy Jackson will be Pierce Brosnan, who played Siri in the Centaur in the first film. And he had a replacement, as you know. He played Giles in Buffy. So... Pierce Brosnan decided not to come back, so we'll see what happened. He did this. I don't see the point of Percy Jackson 2. I hate the first film. No offense, to my, my, my co host Norman. Who? I'll have an announcement in the show for them. Yeah. So, I don't know. This movie sounds decent with Vivian Nicole Brown and a lot of people they're casting now. It sounds decent, and we'll see how it does next, in the, what is it, two years? Ne next, next fall, next summer, when it comes out. And. Danowski's no, what's we're talking about? Depending, I don't know who's cast. Is Russell Crowe co cast is no, yeah, I don't know, but the movie will start in July filming, so I'll have more news on that later. And for all you people that were all pissed off about Expendables 2 being uh, PG 13, well, stop your bitching, stop your complaining from my sources. Sylvester Stallone called me up yesterday and said, hey man, it's from Rated R. Oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, Rated R. I love it. Expendables 2 can be kick ass. I can't wait. Be awesome, awesome. So, no PG 13 will be. Chuck Norris didn't get into it. And no, Sly Stone to call me up, man. And if you love spies like us, Chevy Chase and the Anactoid are teaming up again for another comedy screenplay, which would be awesome. They're two great comedy legends. And if they did team up, what can they do? We great. And John Carter was a big flop. And how much of a big flop? This can cost next year. They have the next month, the Disney House Report has to report losses. They're going to report $200 million loss in John Carter. That's how bad it was. And people say it's great. People say it's, it's not a bad movie, just bad promotion for the movie. Uh, I got time. I need to slowly hurry up. I remember I talked about a um, issue with Tina Fey and Owen Wilson. About a Tina Fey playing a uh, missions officer for Ivy College who, while she's been happy, to made her Monday in the routine. They're shaking this up and partially inspired by attractive, perceptive students. Someone from her past, Ranger's life, bringing the prospect of new alarmants. Well, it was good once ago. It was it was rumored almost wasn't talks, but now Paul Rudd is. 
what they got. Because Paul Rudd, love him. Paul Rudd, Tina Fey together. Oh, mashup dramedy goodness. And who they pick as an attractive prospective pro student, student? We'll see how they do. Let's don't get no uh, handsome face. Get a funny guy. Get a funny guy to play the handsome guy. In the comments, tell me who you want to play the handsome guy. Handsome, I mean attractive, prospective students. He has to be an Ivy League age. He can't be no up there like a 19 to 23 year old actor. That is funny. And Jake Jill and I will do an old face-off type role. He'll be he'll be starring an enemy. He'll play Javier Golan. And he'll be in Javier Golan's directing. Never mind. He'll play a depressed dimensional history teacher who decides to watch a video one night at home. He's not particularly impressed, but things take a change of turn when he wakes up to find the film but he's playing on his TV. And the man who looks exactly like him, exact, actually like he did five years earlier on the screen. That's crazy. What the fuck kind of book is this? Though the parent, the Oppelganger, is, is incredited on the film, our hero decides to track him down, kicking out a series of bizarre pets to fight Bubba Glass. Jake Juvenal and Dewey Rolls? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. I want to see him doing this. That's pretty decent and pretty cool. And more news on the Hitchcock uh, biopic. Jennifer Jessica Biel has joined the cast. It's really Vera Mills, the actress who starred as Lily Crane and the Hitchcock Masterpiece. So I go, which I will watch soon because there's a lot of like, we have the prequel miniseries, Base Motel, E and E. Then we got the behind the scenes movie. We got two movies out. This movie has the stars of the cast. We got Charlotte Chanson, Janet Lee, James Darcy, Tony Perkins, Andy Hopkins, Helen Mirren playing, the, playing Hitchcock and his wife. That'd be pretty cool. And the number news: Action Kutcher is going into space. He'll be another Virgin Atlantic customer. And now let's go to our movie, our TV news. So if you were sad, Abby Elliot was leaving us now. Hold up, wait a minute. She will not be leaving us now. Yesterday, uh, Tuesday they had a, I think Monday they had, they had a, they had a table read for uh, Ned Fox and my Manny, and it was determined that she wasn't right for the role, so she left it. And now we're searching for another actress. She'll play uh, their daughter for someone, that, someone else played uptight single mother who moves in with her aimless brother, whose aimless brother moves in with her. To help raise her daughter. So, who do you think would be a good actress? We'll see. And if Fringe is canceled, season five had a comic book just like Buffy did, just like Angel, just like Smallville is going to. Yes, there's a Marvel comic coming soon. And Jericho did. So, the producers have already done that, so we'll see how it does. We got some ABC Family News Prayer Liars. A was revealed, and Spoiler's head. Mona was A, just like the books read. Prayer Liars, great show. I would watch it. It's a pretty good mystery series. It's kind of cheesy, but I enjoy it. It was number one. It was three million viewers Monday. It broke social records. Number one social show. Even though Monday Raw was saying their social prayer liars really teen girls tweet up a lot more than that. So it's for we'll return for we have premiere dates for ABC Family. I'm going go through these. We have two new shows and two returning shows. Prayer liars will be back for third season Tuesday June 5th 8 o'clock. Followed by Jamie Design. Who I'm Jamie Design. I'm surprised the second season the ratings weren't good when it premiered, but. I guess ABC Family saw some that I didn't. It'll, it'll be out at 9 o'clock. So we're going to pray lives for Monday back Tuesday, which I, I like better. If I have to, after Midnight Raw, I have to watch Pearl Liars. Yeah. So Pearl Liars on Tuesday, I like that. And now we have two new shows I talked about. Bunheads, which I talked about before from the Gilmore Girls. About a Las Vegas soul girl who impossibly uh, marries a man and goes to a sleepy coastal town and takes an uneasy role at a number of dance school. Okay. We had lined by a Tony Award winning actress, Sutton Foster. So, remember Shelf and Gummer Girls? Creator, which was also Sea Life Teacher, also the running show. Premier Monday, June 11, 9 o'clock. And also the following Wednesday, June 20th, we'll have Baby Daddy from the from the producer that, uh, Dan Baird, who also did Nine Honors Go King, Super Teen Switch, Hamilton and the Woody. Kylie Rolls around a, a young man, Jean Luc Badu, also from Kyle XY, my favorite guys. Kyle XY, love that show, pretty cool show. Who becomes a. Oh, hold on. Who becomes a dad to, to a baby girl when she's left on, on his doorstep by his girlfriend? He chooses to raise his daughter on top of his mother, Melissa Peterman. His brother, Derek Ticker, Derek, the other people that play a Melissa Peter, Peterman plays her. I know Melissa Peterman. Yeah, that, yeah, I know, yeah. And his buddy Tucker, Taj Mori, Taj Mori, yeah. And his girlfriend, Ryan, who harbors a good crush on him, played by Dexter Stars, Chelsea Kane. Interesting. What's been not going right for ABC Family? They've been growing every year, but. His comedy is not doing well. Like, Roommates a couple years ago didn't do well. The only show to do well is Melissa and Joey. So we'll see how this show does. It sounds kind of like Raising Hope, but we'll see. And it sounds like it has some potential. Some good people in there. Tasha Mori, John Luke Badeau, Chelsea Kane, Melissa Peterman. 
So it could be a good show. This ain't Diet Chow, so this is actually Diet Pepsi caffeine free here. Okay, so you want to take a break here? Let's take a break. It's 15 minutes. Let's take a break. We have five minutes left in the show. Pause it. Wait a minute. Go make yourself a hot pocket. Go make yourself something else. Come watch me again. Oh, that one got a drink here. No comment on how bad so is. So is fun great. No caffeine, but I shit will sure. What else we have here on TV news? Stars will be in Magic City after Spark is then to see Mary March 30th. And two things I want to get, get here is two, two last news stories before, I wanna, before we end the show here. Jerry Shore is renewed for season six. I remember last I, I remember a couple episodes I said it wouldn't be renewed, but it is. Well, Zeke Kush, no use pride, and he wanted to see it so the aftermath of that. So, Jerry Shore will be back for season six. So, he'll be shooting in the summer. And also, the situation, there is a situation, he'll be in rehab. I don't want really to talk about Jerry Shore or Kirk Kardashians. I don't want to be like TMZ or anything else. I'm going to be my own person, my own show, run the way I want to. And also, the Munsters pilot, Mockingbird Lane, what is casting now. And the first person running the cast, Eddie Izzard, the British stand-up comedian, also starring in the FX show The Riches. He'll play Grandpa in the next first reinvention. It's a reinvention of the comedy. It is going to be like one hour, like True Blood style show, but t- tone down because it's uh, NBC. But I'm, I'm actually interested to see what Brian Fuller does. The, here's the character Grandpa is now described as a powerful vampire with a quick wit. That's pretty cool. Like Al Wilson, quick wit. Yeah, he is the head of the Mr. Family who continues to have Herman under his thumb. So, Eddie Izzard. Really? Eddie Izzard? That's a pretty good casting. We'll see who else is cast. Now, people want Brad Garrett as Herman, but he's already on in under. He's already cast in ABC sitcom. I know they were trying to do a Wolfie years ago when it was going to be Brad Garrett and Catherine Zeta Jones, who have been a great wife. That's mostly what I have. Oh, a couple, here's a couple other things. Doctor Who, they've cast a new companion. Is Jenna Lewis Coleman, an unknown British actress. So she'll be she'll be replacing everybody. Uh, that's mostly it. That's all that. Adam Levine will be appearing in season two of American Horror Story. Is the way for his first acting job. We'll see how he does as his first acting job. Okay, that's mostly it. Mostly the news. Yeah, okay. And also, I thought about Man at Work. I didn't talk about the other show that will be on after it. It'll be Vince Vaughn's first uh, producing role as a show. He saw him as a star comedian Steve Byrne. It'll star Brute Byrne as Steve takes over his family's Pittsburgh bar. Sounds pretty cool, and I want to watch it. I, I hope PBS has some new comedies. Not comedies that run forever, like House of Pain and stuff. Not that House of Pain and Todd Perry shows are bad. I know. Okay. And another one news before we go. He, I remember they said the Eastwoods hope they they hope the Eastwoods be the next Kardashian there when the John Carter's community next Kardashians. They have a development deal with them. Rumor, this is a rumor. It'll, it'll fall there at things in New York because one's with their one. I can't name them all. Nick is like Nick's with his wife. One's doing Broadway and one's doing Smash. So, be interesting to see. And that's mostly it. And Kathy Bates will appear as the ghost of Charlie Harper in a new episode of uh, in the April 30th episode of uh, Dead Man. Really, Kathy Bates. They really want to pick. Well, they really pick on Charlie Sheen still. Just don't pick on Charlie Sheen anymore. Come on, it's stupid now. It's really, Kathy Bates. Really. Yeah. And also, other pretty liar news. Mona will be up to regular. If you if you saw the the, the show uh, Friday, I mean Monday, she will went crazy. And she was in the mental hospital, so we'll see what happens with that. She breaks out or something. Okay, Federer came in mark and a special announcement. Uh, midnight. Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, the Storm and Shell will return. It's been gone for probably three weeks now. Yeah, I know Norman's been. I, I run the channel, Norman. But even when I work on this app, he's been filling out job applications and doing that stuff and working to find a job, make some money. Hard economic times. I'm an SSI. I have a little bit of money coming in, so he's like, he has a little more effort than I do. So, so, oh god. So he's going to talk about Mass Effect 3 ending, which I haven't played yet, so don't spoil it for me. Come on, people, don't be dicks. So I'm going to play with my, my friend this weekend. Get to the ending that everybody's pissed about. Someone filed, filed a, a Federal Trade Commission complaint. Really? The Federal Trade Commission, you dumbass? Ain't fucking that bad. We'll see. I'll get my thoughts Monday, Friday, maybe. If I may get it that far. So if you enjoyed Storm and Norman, he'll be back this tonight. He'll be back tomorrow, episode. Where, where it'll be uploaded later today, so look for it on our channel. 
He was back once with our Ring of Honor predictions, which we'll have next weekend. We'll be right with WrestleMania again. He, I know I don't wrestle much, but I will be on here for my own WrestleMania prediction show. Norm will have his, I'll have mine. And also, I'll do my showdown and show predictions too. Not really. I'm like Norman did Ring of Honor shit, because I'm not good at predicting. You know, I love Ring of Honor. Watch it. It's in 20% of the country. Check up in your area, ROHWrestling.com. Check it out. If you want real wrestling and off Diddy bullshit, not that I don't like Diddy, but Ring of Honor, I loved it. I was popping last night. And I want to give a little special fuck you. Fuck you, British Fist, for fucking around with Ring of Honor. Yeah, you got this, this Ring of Honor, well, fuck you. It brings me hate. You want to tell British Fist that? We'll tell him that. But never mind. It's stupid, stupid things. Don't remember what I said. So I'm not longer than I'm supposed to, but this is my own show. I give as long as I want. So remember to like this video. Comment down below your thoughts and news and notes. Give me your opinions and, and answer some questions here. Well, let's see. Let me give you a question for people. Uh, your favorite superhero? Mine is Batman, usually. So, what is your favorite superhero? To make sure I know you watched the whole episode. Answer that question if you watched the whole episode. Give me a like. Share the video on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Tumblr. Post it anywhere you want. So, subscribe as usual. Like, dislike. Tell me why. Tell them fat. Tell my dog. Said that. Whatever. I don't know what that was, but as again, I'll do it again. Peace out. See you Friday.